Okay, so first of all, this is an animation of changes in carbon dioxide concentrations over time. Here is the equator, and here is the South Pole and the North Pole. So along this line are different locations on the Earth's surface. And then up the side here are concentrations of carbon dioxide in uh, parts per million, which is represented by ppm. And then here is a map of the Earth, and each of these dots represents the locations of measurement sites where uh, CO2 concentrations are measured. So the red dot here is the Mauna Loa site, which is in Hawaii, and the blue dot here is a site on the South Pole. And then the grey dots are background sites, so they are located far away from human populations, and then the... Uh, Lighter coloured dots are local signals, so they're located close to large human populations where the CO2 emissions are coming from. And so here is the year, and the animation starts in 1979, and then here is something that looks like a clock face, except it has months instead of hours. And uh, this hand will go around as the years tick by, so this will be a sped up version of carbon dioxide concentrations over time. And down the side here are carbon dioxide concentrations, again matching the ones on this side. And then down the bottom high here are the years, so it starts in 1979, and this axis will change as I play the animation, and you will see this gap fill in here with a changes in carbon dioxide concentrations over time. And uh, each of these dots on the line here correspond to the dots in the map here, and uh, the number of dots will increase as time goes on, as more measurement sites are created, and then when the dots disappear is when the measurement sites were closed down. So if I play the animation, you can see that carbon dioxide concentrations start to increase, and uh, the measurements sites here are appearing and disappearing as time goes on. And here you can see the years ticking by and the hand going round and round. And here you can see the carbon dioxide concentrations being plotted out over time. So the red line here is represented by the measurements made at the Mauna Loa site here, and then the blue line here is represented by measurements made in the South Pole here. And you can see that there is a wave in the Mauna Loa site as uh, carbon dioxide concentrations go up and down in a seasonal cycle. So in the spring and summer, uh, the plants in the northern hemisphere grow and they make leaves and flowers and things like that and so they take in carbon dioxide to do that and that causes carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere to decrease and then in the autumn and the winter those uh, leaves and flowers fall off and start to decompose and that causes carbon dioxide to be released back into the atmosphere and so the carbon dioxide concentrations increase again and this causes a continuous wave. Uh, this also takes place to a smaller extent in the southern hemisphere. You can see the blue line also has a slight wave to it. But you can see that here in this area as it goes upwards and downwards in like a continuous wave as the years tick by. But it happens to a much smaller extent in the southern hemisphere. However, the overall trend is a continuous increase in carbon dioxide concentrations. Uh, as the number of sites increase, the number of dots on this line are also increasing. The lighter coloured dots spike upwards and downwards much more because these are representative of local signals. And then the dark grey dots are background sites, so they are slightly more smoothed out. And uh, we are going uh, forwards in time. Its concentrations go upwards, and this whole animation goes up to 2016, which is the most up-to-date data that's available at the moment. And it is, goes up to just over 400 parts per million in January 2016. 
and now that the animation's reached modern times, it's going to start decreasing again. So this green line here are also me measurements made at the Mauna Loa site in Hawaii. So they're in the same location as the red wave, but it's on a slightly different calibration scale, which is why it's represented by a different color. And now we're going to see Here is uh, data from an ice core going backwards in time to pre-industrial times. So in pre-industrial times, concentrations were much lower, about 278 parts per million, which are represented by these orange dots here. And you can see in the Industrial Revolution, carbon dioxide concentrations spiked up dramatically. And now we're going further back in time. So this light blue color is representative of another ice core. And you can see as we go further back in time, the data gets uh, sparser uh, without modern measurements, but it's still good enough to show that carbon dioxide concentrations were much lower in thousands of years ago. So um, this uh, KY BCE stands for thousands of years before the common era, so this would be like 50,000 years backwards in time. And we're starting to see here the Milankovitch cycles, which are natural cycles in carbon dioxide concentrations. It's go up and down and up and down and up and down again. And now this dark blue line is another ice core. And this also has cycles in carbon dioxide concentrations. And um, anything that is below um, 200 parts per million uh, has very low carbon dioxide concentrations. And these show periods when the Earth was experiencing an ice age. So here and here, 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 and all the way across. And you can see that going back 800,000 years into Earth's past, carbon dioxide concentrations varied between 100 parts per million and 300 parts per million. And this is the natural variation in carbon dioxide concentrations, whereas in modern day times, which is represented by the orange dots here, yeah, and this red line here, the carbon dioxide concentrations are much, much higher, and this is caused by humans uh, burning fossil fuels and releasing extra carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So we are well, well outside the natural range now.